Hello and welcome to our latest GFM talk. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at feedback. Uh, for those of you that are new to this, the dedicated improvement and reflection time is something that is not new. It's been around for a very long time um, and uh, has been used uh, quite successfully in schools all around the country. And the idea is to uh, give students time uh, and a place to, to reflect on, on the work that they've done, how they can improve it based on the feedback that you've given them um, to start to master uh, the skills that we're uh, and the knowledge that we're given. So feedback is essential uh, for life for improvement. Uh, we can't improve unless we uh, we have feedback in, in even in our everyday lives. So how do we ensure that our students get consistently high quality feedback in every lesson without overloading ourselves um, by creating more work, whilst at the same time uh, being able to adapt our approach to our pedagogy to ensure any misconceptions are addressed uh, and that they don't move forward um, in terms of the, the, the students understanding um, to continue with those misconceptions. So from my own experience, uh, having worked in, in lots of different schools, we've tried various uh, forms of, of feedback, various forms of DIRT uh, time as well. Um, and the, 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 the way that we're going to be looking at it today uh, is not the necessarily the be all and end all of, of uh, applying DIRT time, but it's one that, um, that I have used extensively and it's based on, on evidence um, from uh, and research from, from other schools as well. So previously as part of our pedagogical uh, model there was an expectation for um, collaborative dialogue and feedback um, with all students as we do here um, about their learning uh, and this is obviously usually verbal. Uh, what was important was that the students made rapid progress due to that timely intervention uh, and the encouragement and support given by the teachers. Uh, it wasn't necessarily important for the, as, as teachers uh, to write large quantities of feedback in the students' books all the time. Uh, instead, it was better that the teacher and the student engage in some meaningful dialogue, either orally or by the student reflecting on the value of the feedback that we've given them. Um, and the improvement is then evidenced within their, their learning, showing that they've acted upon that feedback. Live collaborative um, uh, feedback was, was also uh, very important. So the teacher would live mark uh, the work of the students during the lesson. This is normally through a consolidation or extended task um, by giving uh, individual students verbal feedback, support and uh, encouragement. In some cases uh, where needed, we could uh, offer further scaffolding. Um, or stretch and challenge uh, for students to have uh, already potentially completed the, the work to their best of their ability. And how can we get some more, uh, more work out of them uh, to show that they're able to, to achieve uh, higher grades? So teachers then could often choose in the, in the margin uh, that verbal feedback had been given by notating a little VF uh, in there uh, in what we used to call the purple pen of progress. Uh, as it was known and that made it very clear that verbal feedback had been given um, and that the students had then acted upon it. Um, what was not important was that we wrote lots of feedback in the book at that point, just at that point. What was important, the student engaged with what we were talking about uh, in that collaborative learning process that we were doing um, and that they improved their work and that was essential that they showed that they improved their work and by doing this um, they would write the improved work from the verbal feedback in green. So we had the purple pen of progress from the teacher, we had the students then uh, improving their work and demonstrating that their work had been improved in green uh, and then they would then revert back to black once they'd done that improved work. So anybody going through the books uh, was able to see that they'd, they'd improved that. Six months, ten months, 12 months down the line, the student picks the book up, they're revising, they're going back through it, they'll be able to go back through, see those green sections and know, ah, that's, that's where I sat down and spoke to Mr. Jones or Mr. Smith or Mrs. Wallace and, and we had, uh, we'd, dis we'd had that conversation because I can see that verbal feedback mark in the book there. I can see that I made some clear progress here and, and pr previously I may have had some misconceptions, whereas now I've improved it, I know that bit is the correct bit and then I've, I've carried on. Uh, and whilst this all seemed a bit fiddly uh, at the beginning, uh, when we first uh, we first introduced it, uh, it was very, very quickly clear that the feedback was being, um, improvement was being made very, very explicit. Now, Phil Royal will discuss this in much, much greater detail later uh, in a series of GFM talks um, with uh, a, a lot of examples that we've got um, from our schools now. So, 
whole class feedback and dirt time the student guide um, so this is a, a lovely little uh, infographic um, that i've used uh, in in the past and it's important that if you've not done dirt time and whole class feedback within your your class or within the cohort that you've got at the moment you may have done in the past that we reintroduce it to the class so they're aware of the purpose of it um, and there is something like a rubric that is going to be there uh, and there'll be an expectation uh, that it will happen consistently. And the more that we start to use it within lots of different, uh, in different subjects, the more the students will start to see um, the, the importance of it and how it will help improve their, their work. And I know that we're already using it in quite a lot of subject areas that have already um, started to work um, within, within this area. Uh, so it's important that, that the students understand that we'll choose the topic uh, that they're going to be working on. We'll be looking at um, common misconceptions potentially or ways to improve. They will have been given some, some uh, feedback um, and the whole purpose of it is that we're giving them time to respond. We're, we're structuring it, we're supporting them um, and then they're able to see how they've, um, how they've improved that work. There are lots of different versions um, of this. We will have a look at some of these today. So Dylan Williams, a uh, very, very well-known uh, educator and, and author, um, created uh, Williams four quarter marking schedule. So you're looking at marking in details of 25% of what the students do, skimming, just reading through uh, their books for another 25%, and then self-assessment for the students, looking at the feedback that we've given them, um, monitoring what they've done as teachers, but then expecting the students to, to, to self-mark, uh, self-evaluate and improve their work. And then peer assessment, what better way for students to learn from than from other students, uh, to be the teacher, to be the learner, uh, and then to help and assist each other in, in terms of some collaborative learning and collaborative feedback. Uh, so a set of marked books uh, traditionally has always been an effective proxy for good teaching, um, but there's an awful lot of evidence to say that no matter how much feedback we, we put within the books, unless that marking is acted upon, uh, where's the impact? What, what have they done with that? Uh, Dylan Williams also estimated that if you price teachers' teaching time appropriately, in England we spend uh, on average two and a half billion pounds a year on feedback and it almost has no effect on student achievement unless it's acted upon uh, and ensured that there is progress from there. So we have to ensure that we adapt our approaches uh, to feedback, allowing students to improve, addressing their own individual misconceptions and sometimes how we as teachers deliver certain aspects of the curriculum when we find a common misconception. We know we need to relook at that and potentially go back and address that common misconception. So, uh, one of the notable benefits of, of whole class feedback uh, is it takes roughly 20-30 minutes to go through a, a set of, uh, of class books where we've got a substantive piece of work that we're going to be looking at and note down the key points and look at how we feed back to the class as opposed to hours of reading and writing comments traditionally individually on each and every uh, every book. Uh, it also improves the teacher student feedback loop cycle uh, looking at the work marking improving planning changing. Uh, so there's a very good uh, uh, diagram that I'll, I will share with you in, in more detail. So we'll look at it pick up um, a sample of, of, our, um, of our books we can uh, split them up into lower, middle uh, and, and higher um, and then read through them, skim through them. We'll very quickly identify areas of excellence, areas of spag that need uh, addressing and then areas of misconceptions that we could look at. If there are areas of misconceptions, we need to plan to reteach them. We need to plan to reteach the, the, uh, the spelling errors if it becomes quite common. Um, we can also ask individual students uh, in terms of the feedback to ensure that they, they readdress some of those spelling or grammatical um, errors. If potentially use the, the uh, visualizer to show um, how you would go about marking in terms of, of uh, improving the work. Um, make sure that if there's any, any continual mistakes in terms of spelling and grammar and spag that is retaught, we do some guided practice with them and then allow them uh, the independent practice um, to then redraft their work uh, to try and make it as, as good as they possibly can. So, teacher reads through uh, student books, books are collected in, teacher scans, skim reads them, uh, perhaps do some close uh, reading on particular aspects um, of it, um, make notes, aim to do this step before you see the class next so that we can, we can look at uh, whole class feedback as a form of adapting our planning. Uh, make notes of the strengths, identify the common strength features uh, in, in the work samples, write these down. 
Um, this will allow you to start looking at the positive feedback to reinforce the learning that's being done really, really well and prompt the class uh, to ensure that these are always being done. Normally pick out two or three exemplars to share with people because it's always good practice. Make notes of the improvements, look at um, the, the common misconceptions that, that they've cropped up. We need, need to look at reteaching those. What are uh, potential um, spelling errors that may have, have uh, appeared as well? Um, and then think about how are we going to present that feedback um, to the class in terms of a whole class feedback? And what, what is the key point that we want to make uh, in terms of our DIRT point? So, so with the DIRT task, what do we want the students to look at improving? Is it a, a, an additional question? Is it a particular uh, piece of writing that they've done? Um, is it a particular practical uh, skill that they've not quite got and how can we, we show that they improve it? Within that case, within the practical uh, areas, it may be that we record ourselves doing something so that they can then actually see um, in terms of, of an EDIP model um, where we, we model it. And then really, really consider where is the dirt time going to be? Where is that, that improvement time going to be within our curriculum and within our plan? And ensure that we've actually given the class time to do it. The, the class, the students should understand that this is a time for them to really, really focus on what they're doing. It's not necessarily somewhere where they'll do paired work uh, or it's time to sit down and, and, and chat. This is really where they'll focus quite deeply on their work to make sure that they've improved it. And then finally, something that we really need to, to consider when we're doing DIRT and whole class feedback is this is an excellent, an excellent opportunity within departmental meetings to really, really look at our curriculum design. And if we find that we're delivering a core subject where three, four, five teachers are all delivering the same thing and the same misconceptions start to appear, right, we need to think now, how do we really look at our curriculum design and consider the changes we do next time to ensure that this doesn't happen sure. again. DIRT comes in all different different uh, shapes and sizes. There's lots of, of uh, different uh, versions of it that you can find uh, available on the internet. So the following ones are some that um, we've got within our schools uh, and some that I've taken from, from previous schools. Uh, they all follow the same the same theme. Essentially, uh, you're addressing the uh, the class. What went well and even better if so your WW and EBI, this is a maths one um, where they've looked at some of the, the outcomes that they were struggling on previously. Um, and then in terms of their purple pen of progress within the yellow box, the DIRT task would allow them uh, opportunity to, to improve. I think they're looking at ratios in, in this particular um, this particular one. Um, we've then got business studies. Uh, so the first uh, one we've got, which is the small one behind, that is one that I did in a previous uh, uh, school where we're looking at vocational career pathways and students were, were given feedback on, on what they'd done well um, and where they needed to, to improve in particular, and that one was, was spellings and grammar. Um, and then their task was to look at additional uh, vocational pathways available uh, to them post-16. Uh, we've done something similar here um, within, uh, within um, business studies over at uh, Bay House. That, um, they've done really, really well, and they've tried this with the year 11s, and it's, it's worked exceptionally well. Geography, again, similar ideas multiple choice on, on, on the first one with an, uh, an, uh, an ability to improve some work um, after they've had some feedback from the teacher on a WWW and uh, EBI. Uh, history, a little bit more in depth here where they've looked at some work that the, the students have, have typed up, teachers giving them feedback based on, on what they've done. A lot of it is question uh, and questioning why uh, and where and how they've, they've gone about doing this. The, uh, the students have then highlighted um, different sections based on what they were doing, um, and then they have uh, had their, their DIRT task. You'll also notice here with the WWW and the EBI, um, there are um, comment banks in there, and the teacher has highlighted particular sections of comment banks uh, rather than having to write individual ones. Obviously, this takes um, less time, especially with a, a core subject where you've got uh, potentially a lot of books and a lot of students to look at. Sport as well. This one was a BTEC sport as opposed to core, um, and again was allowing um, feedback with with the students where it's quite difficult uh, for um, assignment-based subjects where you can't give feedback on their their work. 
um, until they've, they've had that, that window of opportunity to do the improvement. So this is a very good way of, of preparing them for, for written work and being able to give feedback on, on the, the quality of what they've been doing. Uh, science again, ensuring that rather than waiting for those termly assessments where feedback is coming, where you could have six to 12 weeks before uh, a, a, an exam, uh, this was ensuring that once every every month they were getting feedback in terms of the work that, that they were doing and the little mini assessments they did in their books. Uh, similarly, English literature, um, this one was, was in particular allowed for uh, four or five different EBIs. The one one well was, was a consistent one across um, the, the, the whole cohort, um, but then there were individualized EBIs that the students were, were given by the teacher um, in terms of allowing them to improve what they were doing. Design tech, uh, looking at the different types of timbers. Uh, I think in this one they were making a stool, if I remember rightly, uh, and then the difference between using MDF, uh, or density board or particle board, um, and uh, the, using the, the solid uh, timber, um, and then in terms of, of what, they would, um, what they would do with them. And then computer science, this is one that we've done here recently. Uh, so initially this is with my year 10 class um, where they were uh, doing Python and pseudocode. So there were certain uh, keywords that they absolutely had to learn for, the, for their assessment. We looked at what went well, how they could have improved. Some special mentions for, for two students who had um, made some great improvements um, in, in terms of what they were doing and, and where they struggled initially with understanding pseudocode. Um, were able to look at the misconceptions that they had how they could go about doing them uh, and their work had, had come along um, in leaps and bounds. And then finally, their DIRT task, uh, which was to, to create a, a computer game that generated random numbers between one and 10, uh, and the user had to guess the number. Uh, it would uh, tell them how many uh, attempts they had left and how many it had taken. So this was all written down then in pseudocode based on what they had uh, they'd Art. Uh, I know that um, Natalie showed some of this um, with Greg in their previous GFM talk, but I just wanted to show this again um, because their little sticker feedback was, was really good um, and, and it's something that I've done myself where you have three or four different types of stickers that you've got available. Uh, you're able then to, 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 to go from, from one to the other uh, and very quickly uh, recognize lower, middle and, and, um, and higher ability students and then give them specific feedback in terms of proving uh, and improving those skills. These ones are ones that I found um, on uh, the uh, wonderful world of the internet. This particular one was quite good um, in terms of when you're doing the books um, and you uh, may want to, to be able to write the information down straight away as opposed to uh, writing notes down and then going back to them. If you prefer handwriting them and then photocopying them, we know we had a lot of uh, teachers that did that. They photocopied them, stick them in, in, the, in the books rather than have to redo them and type them out. This is a brilliant way of, uh, of, of doing that. Uh, Pre-done banks and ticking the banks off with, with set uh, questions. With this one in particular, there were four or five questions and a stretch and challenge task. And the teacher then just identified particular students uh, to, to make sure that they did those particular questions. Um, and then a, a year eight science. So this is more of a, a, a simplified uh, feedback sheet for key stage three. So that's the end of um, our presentation on uh, whole class feedback and DIRT. And if you'd like to know more about implementing DIRT within your curriculum area, we will be emailing out to all departments uh, over the next few days to invite you all to discuss this further with us. Thank you very much for watching uh, this episode of the GFM Talks. My name is uh, Adrian Clarida. I'm one of the Sims and hopefully see you soon. Thank you.